Chin, that's what up, the dean of the uh, Postgraduate Studies Program, and he's going to be presenting his paper entitled Religious Foundation in the Traditional Arts of Asia. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Moderator, Dr. Moderator. Very good morning. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Professor Khan, Dr. and Dr. Yang, Chairman of ALIA, and colleagues. I'm very happy to be here today and to be allowed to speak for, let's say, 10 minutes or so. And I will say a few words about what I'm, I wish to say from my paper, which I have written in, in such a, a short time, really educated for this paper, so you can find some mistakes. There are some typo mistakes and grammatical mistakes. We should be rectified once we publish as either a proceeding or a report on Alia. Thank you very much. In this fourth session, we are talking a lot about philosophy compared to the first three sessions. And Professor Murat Marekar was talking about philosophy also just now, how important philosophy is. And many people have forgotten the significance and the importance of philosophy in art and in our daily life and also in the other fields of, of life. I once asked a friend of mine about philosophy. He said, yes, I know philosophy. He said, well, philosophy is an old area. An old field of, of knowledge. I say, how old? I say, well, it's Sophia Lauren, it's Sophia. <laughs> because philosophy means Sophia. So, no, I said, not Sophia Lauren, it's older than Sophia Lauren. Uh, oh, he said, like Hagar Sophia in Istanbul. <laughs> no, I say, it's older than Hagar Sophia. Because it's always there, and it's always important, and it's always a part of us. We have to think, but we have to think with wisdom, with Sophia. And Sophia has been there and will always be there and we can only survive with understanding and happiness as long as Sophia is with us. So it's very, very important while we are embarking on making us a new source of inspiration, of creativity, of industry, which we all accept. It's very, very important to move forward but we should not forget to look backward and to see again the past and how much the past has deposited meanings even in language, even in terms, even in each thing that we are using and we are talking about. It's always the past. And the past has been staying in Asia for a long, long time. Unlike in the West, where you have a philosopher today, you have another philosopher tomorrow, and all the names and thousands and thousands and thousands of philosophers. You have one philosopher one day. But in Asia, we have very few traditions. We have Hinduism, probably the first religion. We have Buddhism, we have Chinese, we have Islam, the last religion. And we have a bit of Christianity and Judaism. Yet, we can count with our fingers. There are only five or six, and people continue to to trust and believe in this tradition for a long, long time. Can you imagine how bad the world can be without all this tradition? Without Christianity, can the West sustain not fighting one another? People may look and laugh at Christianity as an old thing like a dinosaur, but Christianity has kept the European people together for a long, long time. The, the kindness and also the compassion and mercy, we have a lot in that religion and that we have to respect. The importance of religion and what it has done to humanity, to mankind, and we talk about man, man and mankind. From one point of view, we talk about man. We always say mankind. We don't mind saying that we are different than another man, this man, but we still talk about mankind. How do you have the idea of mankind if you don't have a certain idea of who man is and the meaning of man and the meaning of being human and so on and so forth. So this idea, the seed of this idea is always within us. And we have love, 
we have compassion, we have kindness. So is the thing with art. So we have one form of art and one version of art. We have another version somewhere else. The art of India is in Asia, throughout Asia, in South Asia, in China, in Japan, and other parts of Asia. It's the same story in different versions, in syncretic versions, but it's the same story. So it's very important for us to understand the religious background and the philosophical background behind all these arts. Even for today, for postgraduate students, they need to know all that, or else they won't be able to understand where they come from. You can make stories about your neighbor next door, but you cannot compare the story to, of your neighbor next door with the story of Bhagavad Gita, for example, or the story of Potehi, you must have this journey to the West. Until today, you can see all the Chinese movies, journey to the West, journey to the West. It becomes like a common commodity among families, among people, among believers, and so on and so forth, which means that it's always there. And continue to survive. Why it continues to survive? must be a reason why it continues to survive. Because there's a substance there. There's an essence talking about the human struggle in search for truth. And of course, the word truth may mean a thousand things. But for a traditional man, truth is very, very important. That is his heart, that is his essence, that is the object that he seeks throughout his life. That make him a man. Now, for the next few minutes, I guess, <coughs> I want to talk about Isha, uh, the common experience. We have the problem today, the hutong in Beijing, they've been tearing down. We have the same experience here in Malaysia, in Jakarta, in Manila, everywhere, throughout the world. And taking the fact of the rapid growth of Asia, we should consider the strong possibility that Turkish art form may be slowly vanishing over decades and be replaced by new art form, practices and products. The traditional practices, way and purpose, more importantly, their doctrines, may be forgotten by the contemporary practices of the arts. Many of the forms of art today are not performed according to the original presentation. There have been different kinds of innovation, changes and additions to suit the present social and political need of society. With traditional life is slowly vanishing, just like the tearing down of the Hudong building in, in Beijing and other cities, traditional art, traditional art may also find it difficult to be sustained and preserved, and the losing of the knowledge of the arts. The difference of traditional art is strong, strongly felt by many researchers who are undertaking the study of traditional art and have found it hard to find personalities like traditional masters who can fully explain the foundation of those forms of art, able to practice with great knowledge, understanding and experience. Here, Pater, <coughs> Patricia Matuski. She was working with Pa Hamza in London. And Pa Hamza has already passed away, and his son is taking over. Started to talk about Star Wars and the uh, Wayang Kule of this kind, Wayang Kule of the politics, Wayang Kule of the past against Amno and the Wayang Kule of. Hmm. Never stick to the original uh, stories of the Gita because there's no demand for it. And people are demanding to know what the newspaper is writing, they want to know the same thing in the traditional art, in the Wayang Kule. So the story changes, the meaning lost. And we are not going to revert back unless we pay proper attention to the traditional art, teach our students, make them understand that this art has its own origination and the origin is this and this and this. And why they are doing so in arts, why art is important, why is Borobudur, why is the principle behind Borobudur, why there are so many steps, why there are so many levels, why the Buddha found enlightenment at the top of Borobudur instead of at the foot of, of the place. There must be a reason for all this and why the architecture is in such a way as a work of contemplation rather than a temple. So there must be thousands and thousands and thousands of reasons behind all this and that need to be explained. You cannot just show the picture of Borobudur as if it is a great monument, but more than that, it's a part of us. 
the understanding of the external world is just like the understanding of the internal world. If you don't have beauty, how can you see something beautiful? You must have beauty within you. If you don't have love, how can you love others? And where does this love come from? It doesn't come from the society. It comes from within. Only when you have love, you can love others. Only when you love your mother, you can love the, the, the society and love other people. But the love has to be there is a, a seed, in, as a seed in your life. I think it's almost impossible to understand the foundation of Asian art without the various doctrine of Asian religious belief. Now we have the Panama, they're closing down, all closing down. It started in USM, they closed down. And then UAE, they closed down too. And then UM, the Civilization and Dialogue, also almost closed down. Most of the professors are you know, sleeping now, they have nothing else to do. Oh. So they are in, <laughs> they have people looking at them. <laughs> Nobody wants to listen to them anymore. Uh -huh. So as a result, they are, they are fading. Most of the philosophical uh -huh. departments are fading. Uh -huh. While before, you see in Vienna, University of Vienna in Austria, 1648, they started the Department of Theology and Philosophy. That is the basic, that is the foundation of thought of uh, how we think, we, how we think, is very, very important. And, of course, they have uh, the sacred knowledge, learning matters related to sacred knowledge, and so on and so forth, is very, very important. So it's almost impossible for us to understand Asian art and culture without this philosophy, so called, the Sophia. It is practically impossible to understand the nature and major features of a Zen garden. You go to a Zen garden, you know, it's such a beautiful Zen garden. But why is it actually? Why is it such? Why the tea, tea ceremony is such? Why is it behind that? Why is it behind Kabuki? Why is it behind the symbol of the tree? You have the symbol of the tree in the Quran, you have it in the Bible, you have it in the Veda, you have it in, in, in the Kabuki presentation, you have it in Wayang Kulit, you have it everywhere. We have we call Gunungan, you know, the elevation of Gunungan, and we call it uh, uh, the Bunyan tree, Bodhi tree, Bodhi tree of Buddhism. Why we have this symbol and other kind of imageries shared by many people, even by the American Indian. Even the American Indian has the same symbol, and they were talking about something. What are they talking about? If I understood, I don't understand all these things, then I think art becomes useless. You can just destroy it, put it away, do whatever you like. You can move forward or backward. Human being has to move forward. But it must look backward. Backward, I mean not in the pejorative sense, in a negative sense, but in a positive sense. <coughs> but I will further explain if there's any question on that. I say traditional and religious art may be misleading and misunderstood. If we use only contemporary approaches to understand them, and this requires a proper study of religious doctrine and method of the traditional art production. Finally, every traditional form of art is meant for man to elevate himself above the external expression and achieve the internal meaning and the purpose of art. I mean, you have the Bharata Natyam, the Indian dance. Bharata is news. Natyam, neti, emptiness the news of emptiness, the news of Siva, the news of Shiva, and the news of Shiva is related to the news of Brahma, and Brahma is one, and empty, and void, and many, many other things behind all these things. Or Mahabharata, the big news of salvation for mankind, and many, many other things. If we don't understand all these things, and we fail to, to, to teach our students all these things, then we are we are committing suicide in terms of our mind and in terms of our way of looking at things, at, at reality, the realities of us. <clears throat> Here we are alluding to the integrated aspect of the art. This may demand for the re-understanding of the traditional doctrines that carries the meaning of those art forms. Art in the old days was produced and performed as part of religious ritual and we should be able to understand why this has been so. It is said that Indian dance or the cosmic dance of Shiva is the artistic version of the Veda itself. Today, Bharata Natyam, news of the neti, of the emptiness, is performed in many versions. We have the inner dimension of self, transformation, to know the one is not that. Asia preserving, preserving the heritage. 
conclude. Yes, one minute more. If I have to listen to the moderator or else, then I call the security guard and put me out of the. <laughs> <laughs> Having said so, I would suggest that this is the time for us Asian, through our school of higher learning in the art, to learn from each other, to benefit and to share the cultural heritage, which we are very much in common. Art school at the postgraduate level, especially, should teach a traditional doctrine, comparative religion and culture, and the history of the art in Asia as important subjects that can be can enlighten our mind and understanding of the traditional past. Traditional practice, practitioners and masters of the art should be engaged to teach and practice with students together to become the resource persons in the area of traditional art. Students should learn through the method of master disciple learning like what we have had in the old days in order to become true young masters themselves. Images and symbols that represent the very core and essence of the major fundamental understanding of life, the cosmos, death and reality of man, such as light and darkness, the free of life, free of knowledge, unity of mankind, the music of the spheres, the internal, the internal hierarchy of man, and there is the narrative in Arabic or the chakras in Hinduism or the self, and the inner dimension, which is the paradisal nature, must be made established again and known in our program at a higher or postgraduate level. Students and scholars from all over Asia may recollect their own tradition in the culture, cultural foundation of the arts. This is significant as the basis of, uh, for unity, cooperation, and understanding of each other. I thank you very much for your time. And I'm willing to answer some questions if there's any. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for that very interesting paper. And as we're getting prepared for our uh, next paper, I would just like to, to encourage the audience to, to think about one of the, 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 the points that uh, Dr. Baha made at the end of his paper, saying that um, students should learn through the master-disciple method. I think that is part of the, the, uh, the central objective here at, at Swara, is that is, is integrating these these traditional practices with, with modern methods and trying to create something new and uniquely uh, uniquely Malaysian, uniquely Asian in a certain respect. And I think this is a theme that runs through so, several of the papers. Anyway, moving along, uh, we we do not have the pleasure of our fourth speaker, Dr. 